Welcome to the What If Podcast with your hosts, Spencer Worth Davis and Ryan Copperood. Welcome, this is the What If Podcast. Welcome, everyone. My name is Spencer. His name is Ryan. Hi. We're talking about time travel. Oh, boy. What if you could travel through time? Yeah. Do we? Are we going to Are we gonna add back the foghorn, leghorn stuff that we were doing right before we introduced ourselves? No. Nope. Nope. All right, guys. Just so you know, we were doing foghorn, leghorn impressions. Don't rope me into that. <laughs> that was purely Ryan. Ryan has a terrible rooster impression for anybody that uh, wants to investigate that on their own time. If you tweet, if you tweet us... I'll I'll film I'll film myself doing the impression and send it to you, and it will make you sad. <laughs> um, hi guys, we're excited to be back with you this week. No guests, just me and Spencer talking about. Fuck with us, we grown now. We grown now. It's just me and Spencer. We grown. We don't need. We've been grown. We don't need friends. We've been broke. No, we do need friends. We love our friends. <laughs> We're talking about time travel and, you know, moving around through uh, the fourth dimension and such. Yeah, man. I feel like, all right, so when we started doing this show, uh, well, going on nine months ago now, we... Fuck with us. We old now. <laughs> We've been here. We've been had iTunes reviews. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like this this topic made it on our very first episode ideas spreadsheet we ever created together. It did. And we've, mm, I'm, have it's too we? big. It's a big one. It's too big. I'm, I'm sure this will. Well, depending on whether or not y'all like it, we uh, could do a whole episode on Quantum Leap. Yeah, the TV show. Yeah, <laughs> show's great. That is a show I've never seen. What? Believe it or not. Oh man, some uh, low quality '90s sci-fi. Wasn't it like on BBC or something like that? Or no, it was an American show. It was okay. Yeah. I'm, maybe I'm thinking it was on like right after Touched by an Angel. <gasps> was it really? No, I don't think so. Oh. Those shows just always felt similar to me. I'm bu- I'm bummed because I definitely watched some Touched by an Angel in my day. So I'm like, yeah. why didn't we turn? Why did we turn Jeez. the TV off, Mom and Dad? Let's start. Uh, let's start at the beginning. Yeah, because you don't have to go back that far. I read a book last week called Time Travel by James Glick. <laughs> Creative ass titles, man. Hey. <laughs> well, technically, the full title is Time Travel: A History. Ooh, it's, yeah, it's pretty cool because it, it goes through the the history of time travel as like a cultural concept, phenomena. Yeah, and you don't have to go back very far. And it was surprising to me that the first mention of a time machine, at least, yes, in the Western culture was 1895. Really? Yeah. Do you know how well do you know your literature? Do you know what book it was? Ooh, the Time Machine. Yes, by. Um. Wait, did you know the name of the book, or did you just guess that it was called the Time Machine? I remember machine? a book called the Time okay. Machine. Nice. But I, I mean, it was it was definitely like a a total reach, but I can't remember who it was by. H. G. Wells. Oh, it was Wells. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I've never read it. I just remember it being talked about. That's the first time that a, a physical contraption of some sh- of some sort shows up as like the way that you're going to travel through time. I, that shocks the hell out of me, to be honest. I don't know. The, I guess like, industrial revolution, machinery right. coming into vogue. Maybe that is before then. You wouldn't have had an idea of a machine, really. I mean, obviously before 1895, yeah. but not like if you go back a couple hundred years, you don't. That's true. But I mean, but think about like when. This is going to be a real stupid question. We're just getting started. We might as well start asking <laughs> stupid questions. We like, got an abundance. <laughs> like when was the first time that uh, like a spaceship or like an airplane came into? Well, like, I, and that's what I was going to say. Like, uh, it's hard to say because you wouldn't have called it that. Sure. Something that could fly like birds, but. Right. And so then you have to look at our records of legends and myths and then try and through translation (laughs) and you know uh, hundreds of years figure out okay when they said he flew like a bird with did did they mean he was a he was a bird with shiny wings yeah so and his butt sounded like an engine Um, yes. <laughs> yes. That's how they wrote it. So I, I had that same thought with time travel of did it exist as a concept, but it wouldn't have been called that. Right. So really all all the author is saying is that 
That's the first time that the phrase time machine was used. Got it. It was coined by H.G. Wells in 95. Got it. And time travel as a phrase didn't show up in a dictionary until 1914. Damn, that's so wild. In my mind, I feel like there has to be... I mean, I know, like you said, it would it would show up under different names, but I just think about all of the the weird old stories, you know, and old legends and prophecies and well, all kinds of weird shit where, like, I have to imagine people were like, you could go back in time and change the past or whatever. I don't know. Well, even a story like <clears throat> Rip Van Winkle, is, yep. is that, does that count? Uh, yeah, it's an interesting question. I was actually just Googling what year uh, A Christmas Carol came out. There was time travel in A Christmas Carol? Well, yeah. He goes back and sees himself as a child oh, in class sure, and like sure. is a witness to the, well, the ghost of Christmas those were past like and shit. visions, though, right? He wasn't physically in those places. He, um, he was a, a ghostly observer of those. Yeah. It was okay. like viewing a, a, a film or a record of it, right? He wasn't interacting with anything, right? I suppose. Yes, no, he wasn't. 1843. Well, even then is, I mean, but I mean, but still, like 40, 50 years earlier. I guess, I guess for me, it's at least like conceptually steering towards people moving back and forth in time. I'm sure someone had the idea way, way before that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, well, I don't know. I, I also wonder sometimes about how. The concept of time has evolved over time, and yeah. our industrial society relies on time and measures time and pays attention to time in a way that a few hundred years ago no one would have. Yeah, that's really true. And so maybe that concept has also evolved. Yeah, I mean, I have to imagine that too is related to, um, I mean, Partially to the Industrial Revolution. I mean, we have clocks everywhere now, you know? I mean, they didn't have clocks. You had like a clock in the middle of your town a couple hundred years ago, and that was the right. clock. And then eventually people started getting them in their homes. And now we have them on our wrists and on our phones and on our computers, and they're fucking everywhere. So even just your general consciousness of the concept of time and its play on your life, I would imagine, has grown over time too. I think part of what popularized the whole idea of time travel was uh Einstein's theory of relativity also though which was around the same time was it what year what year did that 1905 oh wow okay hmm. which as it relates to time travel you know he in uh special relativity came out in, it was published in 05 which talked about both time dilation so basically that the faster you move the slower time moves for you right um but also the relativity of simultaneity, which is basically saying that two things which might appear to happen simultaneously for one person might not for another person. If they are moving relative to either the things being observed or to the other person. Right. So basically saying that like we experience time differently based on where we are and how we're moving and how things are interacting relative to each other. Yeah. Should I talk about the Hafiel Keating experiment really quick, just as sure. proof of time dilation? Yeah. So, I mean, at the time, this was, at least as far as I'm aware, Einstein had the theory, but had not actually had any, um, like, experiment to prove time dilation. This was all theoretical in execution, right? I, when was, I'm not, actually not familiar with this experiment. So. The Hafiel Keating experiment happened in 1971. Oh, well, then yes. But I'm, I mean, I mean was, yeah. at the time he wasn't really experimenting with this stuff, right? He was just sort of being crazy uh, uh, on a chalkboard <laughs> and being like, check out what I figured out. That is the most disrespectful <laughs> description of anyone ever. No, no. He was just being crazy on a chalkboard. No, he I was mean. was rolling around on it, talking to himself, <laughs> drawing pictures of ducks. <laughs> yeah, just being crazy with chalk. <laughs> He just, and then he just wrote down some numbers and it turned out. Right in, in the middle of writing a poem about his favorite taco. <laughs> and then, you know, some numbers happened. And Einstein. Like, Maybe being, I'm right. Being crazy with chalk. I meant being crazy <laughs> as in crazy brilliant more so right, than just right. pure insanity. So what, what did 
old crazy ass Einstein come up with? <laughs> so he well he came up with exactly what you're talking about theoretical relativity and and the concept of time dilation as it relates and there was uh there was an experiment that was done in 1971 to prove that time dilation is a real thing, which would have been significantly after Einstein died. Yeah, I don't know what year he actually died in. Uh, Fifty something. 40, 55. 55, okay. Yeah. Um, wow, I was, was out of here. Closer than I thought it was going to be. Um, Dude, I pulled up his <clears throat> Wikipedia page to see when he died, and it's him standing in front of a chalkboard that just has a circle drawn on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was right! <laughs> oh, my God. He's real proud of it, though. He's writing he's a poem about a big his old favorite smile taco. On his face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. Explain this experiment. I'll stop interrupting. The, the picture, the picture from the chalkboard is just very early in his career. He's like, "Look, a circle." <laughs> you just start drawing a taco. I, I, <laughs> ingredients have no, not been included. No, it's more like yet. a half circle, Al. <laughs> Keep trying. Oh fuck! All right. So the I think it's Hafeel, H A F E L E uh, Keating hyphen Keating experiment. Basically, what they were trying to do is prove that relativity relativity was a thing and that time dilation was real. And the way that they thought the best way to do this would be is to take three sets of atomic clocks. To this day, it's the most accurate to the nanosecond uh, clock that we can possibly have. That's how GPS works. It is how GPS works. Um, so three sets of clocks two in each set because they wanted to have a control to make sure that there wasn't any sort of fuckery going on. So they had two at a uh, U.S. Naval Observatory base, and they had two in one airplane and two in another airplane. They synced them all at the same time on the ground. And then what they did was they took off both planes, and they had them both fly around the world twice, one going east and one going west around the planet two times. Two times, two times. Two times, two times. And then they had them land at the Naval Observatory and compared what time the clocks all had on them. For what it's worth, two atomic clocks that get synced at the same time should go off by like, I don't even know what the number is, but it's something absurd. It's like uh, one, one, one millionth of a second every 30 Ooh, years number. or something like that. Like it's, it's insane. Turns out the planes that were moving quickly and circling the planet, time had actually slowed down. They were behind the clock that was stationary at the naval base. Because they were flying real quick. Because they were flying real quick, uh, hundreds of miles an hour. So this was one of the first instances of people proving, hey, if you move faster, technically speaking, time is moving slower for you. I already start getting confused at that point. Like, oh, me too. Because <laughs> like I, I don't even have a, a great definition of what time is. Yeah, I and, mean it's something we perceive, right? It's the perceived. In that sense, it's not our perception, though. That's saying that there's some sort of it's a universal m- measurement. Independent of of anyone observing it, right? Measuring the perception, yeah. So what? what? <laughs> I mean, it's a metric, right? It's a of what though? Um, hmm. En- yeah, entropy, ex- experience, entropy. It is kind of entropy. Our slow march towards death. <laughs> but it's, it's not. I mean, it's it's because <sighs> the the other. I forgot to mention when we were talking about the the book time travel. Yep. H.G. Wells' The Time Machine was also the first mention or the first documented uh, mention of time being the quote-unquote fourth dimension. Oh, okay. And functioning basically as another dimension of space and the whole idea of space-time being connected. um, Which was then later, I guess, built upon in in an actual physical way. Yep. But like, I just have a, like that, I I can understand that to a point. And then once it comes around to applying it, I have no idea what that actually means. Yeah. I mean, I definitely agree with that, especially, you know, conceptually, I can understand this experiment, but why that happens is still beyond my reach. Why, why a, a plane 
moving quickly around the planet, why time technically, by very, very small increments, by the way, I, I, I should have clarified. Right. right, right. right. Uh, it's, Not like a it's, couple hours. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I, I looked up a little bit more data about it too because they've done new experiments since. Uh, the the one most specifically related to the International Space Station. Yeah. Because the ISS... Uh, <laughs> do you know how fast the ISS travels around the planet? I mean, orbital speed, I don't know what that is. It's real fucking fast, it's though. It's five miles a second. Yeah. Well, you got to not run into the planet, dude. It's, you got to go back around. <laughs> yeah. It's 17,150 miles per hour is how fast the ISS is right. spinning around our planet. Well, and uh, what's Scott Kelly? Is that the guy that was up there for a year and has a twin that was not up there? Um, Yes. Who was also taking shots at B.O.B. on Twitter. Oh, that's awesome. Did you see this? No. Oh. We didn't talk about it on the podcast. You guys, B.O.B. is trying to raise. Oh, did you see he changed how much money he's trying to raise? No, did he realize that satellites cost more than 200 grand? <laughs> Hell yeah, he did. <laughs> Hell yeah, he did. Do you know? Okay, so we should set the stage that, really that quick, you guys. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. B.O.B. is starting a GoFundMe to try to prove that the earth is flat. In and the dumbest way possible. In the dumbest way possible. And Spencer and I have been roasting him pretty much ceaselessly since we found out that this was the thing that was happening. And his initial goal was to raise two hundred thousand dollars to launch a satellite high enough that he could. He was saying, hashtag Show me the curve. In his in his words, though, to be fair, one if not multiple satellites. He thought maybe he could get a few out of it. Yeah, you know, those five thousand dollars satellites that keep shooting up there. Right. Um, also, but, like, there's already some up there, dude. We we, we don't need yours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was my that was my point. Was look at the live video footage from the ISS, man. Just so, That's all you need to show you the curve. So Scott Kelly tweeted at him. He tweeted him a link to the, the live stream from the ISS. And was like, want me to show you the curve? No, and he said, maybe you should donate that money to Puerto Rico. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. He's like, we got this one, dude. Flamed. I already figured it out for oh, you. Oh, that's so great. Um, but yeah, so uh, he he has changed it now to a million dollars. And he wants Which to- still isn't going to do it. He wants, well, now he's saying he's going to do it for a satellite and a variety of experiments Does that are million, going to test the flatness of the planet. You're build and launch a satellite for $1 million? No, he's not. He's going to piss it down a drain by tying a GoPro to a fucking weather balloon. That's what he's going to do. <laughs> <laughs> or, or two, two also, GoPros like, and two weather balloons. Also, the whole idea is that a satellite orbits the planet it I goes know. around it dude. i know where did where does he think they go where does he think how does how does he think his cell phone works man anyway <laughs> the international space station which speaking of going around things goes around our planet at seventeen thousand one hundred and fifty miles per hour uh for any astronaut who is on the iss if they are on there for six months at a time their body clock, their personal experience of time, yep. is 0. 0.005 seconds slower than on Earth. So that's a much larger measurable uh, difference than what was happening so, with the airplanes. Airplanes was minuscule, like again, like milliseconds. So Scott Kelly was 0. 0.01 seconds younger than his twin brother? Correct. When he came back? Correct. So I think I'm... Like maybe got half a step closer to understanding this. So an atomic clock, it's measuring what decay of a of an of an um, atom or the transition of an atom from one state to another. Atomic clocks measure so when an atom basically moves the electrons that it puts off, it puts off like at from a, one level, one energy level to another to the next. It as as long as the atom is at one temperature and it stays at that temperature, it will continue to put those off at a repeating pattern. <clears throat> so, so it measures how many of those, whatever vibrations or, or or whatever state changes occur in a certain period of time. And that's how we, keep, they're so minute that that's what we use to track seconds. And that's actually happening more slowly if that clock is, is moving, moving faster. At a high rate of speed? Yes. What the fuck? I know, dude. I know. <laughs> I, I know. I know. Like I, I thought, I like I thought that helped me, and then that just now I'm equally confused blew, again. Blew my mind. Mm -hmm. I actually saw uh, in my research for this episode that the uh, the ep the movie Interstellar, which we've talked about on here once or twice before, the scene where they go down to the planet, yeah, uh, with the crazy strong gravity, yeah, yeah, which 
not to get too whatever, but if the density is higher, the gravity is higher, or if the speed is faster, it has the same impact, which is kind of weird. Wait, what? I know. And see, this is getting into the science of time travel, which I promise we'll get away from. The way that I understand it is that in the theory of theory of relativity, it could be both the speed could could increase to have the effect on time, or the gravity or the density could affect the oh. the time as well. So you're saying time would move more slowly near a very dense object? Exactly. Got you. That's the... And also the closer you get to a very dense object, probably? Yes. Which is why when they go, if you if you haven't seen that movie, I'm sorry, we'll be done with it in 45 seconds. But when, when they go and they Actually, land... Actually, you should just go watch it. Yeah, I mean, you should go watch the movie. I apologize. It's, it's a good movie. It's a great movie. Um, when they land on the planet, that's why the 45 minutes that they are on the planet for the guy up in the spaceship, whatever, right. however high up... He goes crazy and starts fucking C-3PO. Like, yeah, because yeah, he's up there for 21 years starts and grows a big beard. Drawing things on chalkboards. Drawing things on chalkboards. Like, like crazy people. Yeah. Um, but no, but they said that the science behind that, based on what they talk about in the movie, is actually was actually legit science based on... Yeah, the physics, for the most part, are like pretty solid. They consulted with actual phys- astrophysicists. Yeah, I mean, it gets a little wonky towards the end there, but... Well, know. I mean, it's also fiction, so... Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, so anyway, I guess, you know, you were talking about Einstein and Einstein's theory around that time. And I think the, this experiment is, is a good, uh, is a, is, is good evidence enough for us to know that time is malleable yes. and, I, and I guess that's what I was, what I was getting to with the whole idea of, uh, of special relativity and time dilation is that proved that it, time is not constant. Right. Or that time is relative. Yeah. Which I, I it's weird because, it, it, well, it proved that it's relative in an actual physics sense. Right. But we all know that. Like, eh. we experience time, I'm not saying on that level, but like, you experience time differently based on other factors. Oh, yeah. I heard a, I'm not going to be able to cite this article, but I, it made so much sense to me. I heard this. Uh, I heard this explained once. Uh, the way that it relates to okay, so you have a long weekend, right? You have a three day weekend. If you do nothing during your three day weekend, you know, you you Netflix and chill. You you cook. You lay low at the house. Whatever. While it's happening, you feel like time is moving really slowly, right? Because you're just not doing anything. You're just chilling. You're napping. Your everything is slow. If you instead over your long weekend, you travel somewhere, you're seeing new shit, you're doing new things, you're moving constantly at the end of the weekend, you feel like your weekend was longer, even though at the time you feel like it blew by, you know, you feel like things were blowing by Mm. and that, and the article basically posits that the way that our brain perceives time passing is in the moment, it perceives a lack of activity as it moving very slowly high activity moving very quickly that's sort of intuitive but then after the fact it's the reverse that the more activity that happens we perceive it as a longer period of time whereas if you do nothing all weekend your brain goes i don't know what happened my weekend just blew by you know right what'd you do all weekend uh i'll watch this show yeah (laughs) and then like i'm here again i don't know i don't know how it happened yeah but that, but that, I think, again, I'm not pulling any of the data or statistics or brain scans from the article, but, but the concept that they were basically positing was we do, depending on our speed of motion and our perception, yeah. totally have a different understanding I mean, of we, how quickly have things happen. Cute little phrases for it, even. Time flies when you're fucking watching House of Cards. I don't think that's how it goes, but well, yeah, you, you kind of got it. I'm, I tried hard, you guys. But yeah, th- so that... I think that brought into a realm of physicality that it hadn't existed in before. For sure. That's right. That at least in one direction, we can accelerate or, de- well, I guess you can't really decelerate, but you can change the rate at which time passes. Yeah. Not really so much in the other direction, though. Uh, how so? Like, you can't go backwards. Well, as far as we know. Yeah. I mean, most of what, uh, most of what I've seen documented is that for moving forward, I mean, cause there's, there's also a lot of other theories about, you know, is cryogenically freezing your brain and waking it back up at a later date. Is that technically a form of future time travel? You know, but that's like, what I'm talking about. That's going forwards. 
No, that's what I'm saying, that there are multiple versions of that, but actually being able to lift your ass up and go backwards into the past is a time travel that most scientists are like, I don't know if we can do that. Right. I I went down the the rabbit hole of trying to figure out why time goes forwards rather than backwards. Yeah. Time's arrow, if you will. Time's arrow. And I know you haven't watched the brilliant Star Trek episode of the same name, so I'm not going to ask. Sure haven't. You should. Sure haven't. Listeners. Is it? Brian is, is a is a lost cause at this point, but listeners, you should go watch that episode. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a lost cause. I will watch Star Trek at some point. It just has not risen in priority for me. This is the time dilation cool. one, isn't it? Doesn't somebody you don't, go you live don't a appreciate life? Appreciate my suggestions. It's okay. It's fine. I understand. <laughs> Whatever we do, I've like, accepted it. We, that's why I wasn't addressing you. We take on like 75 percent of each other's suggestions. Fuck that. But most, uh, according to physicists and all of our natural laws. Time should be able to go in either direction. And most of our laws of physics would hold and would work even if time went from new future to past instead of past to future. Go ahead. I have a question already. Yeah, go ahead. Well, doesn't causality change that right away? I mean, well, the concept of causality as we understand it is essentially... A happens and so does B, right? I mean, if I if I hit my bottle mm-hmm. and it falls off of this table, I caused that to happen. That's time going forward, right? That I my hand hitting that bottle caused it to tip over. Mm-hmm. But if time were to go in reverse, it wouldn't make sense for the bottle to come up off the floor onto the table and and hit my hand backwards. It's not causing that to happen. I'm causing that to happen. Right, but wouldn't when you just then have a different? Isn't that more an issue of language than than anything else? We call the thing that happens first cause, and we call the thing that happens second effect. Um, you could you not also just run that in reverse, and then you just have to call it something different? I guess, but I mean, think about it. I mean, think about it in a totally different way. Like, think about when you make a beat. You know, like you call you when you make a beat and you, all the things that you sample and pull into your computer, that's you causing all of these, you know, multi instrumental things to happen. It doesn't work in reverse. We can't just like push that backwards and have those things be happening to you. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. I mean, that is how we we experience time. The the yeah. question I'm asking is like, why? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, I, I, it is a curious question. I just think that causality for me is the number one thing that time goes forward because the things that we do make the next thing happen. Not, it doesn't happen. There is no world in which that happens. Well, we only have one world. <laughs> well, right. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm well, just I saying mean, that's why That's why I, I, I guess. I, I think your argument is it happens that way because it happens that way, which is like... It, you could yeah. also say, why doesn't it happen a different way? For and sure. So close as I could get for like an actual explanation yes. is entropy, that things tend to go from more organized to less organized. Mm. We, we move in a general direction from order to chaos. Yes. And that holds true on like a universal level. Mm-hmm. When... As it, evidenced by our world today. <laughs> well, and yeah, I mean, not on a societal level, but like on a, yes. on a physics level. Right, right. Uh, our best model is that the universe started from a, a point of total order and is slowly evolving towards total chaos. <laughs> <laughs> a whole bunch of bullshit. And that would be then time starting at the at the big bang that moment of perfect order yep and then moving towards whenever our i guess the the heat death of our universe when everything stops <laughs> however many billions of years in the future that is but other than that like why couldn't there be a universe in which it doesn't work that way yeah where things are marching the other direction so I read an interview with, I, I already forgot the guy's name, but uh, <laughs> a, whatever, I'll, I'll find it and link to it. Um, a physicist who, like his, his goal, his career is is trying to answer that question. Hmm. And he gave the example of if you, if you have an egg in your refrigerator, yep. you're not surprised. 
right? You don't look at it and be like, whoa, look at how ordered that thing is. Sure. There's like a, a yolk and it's surrounded by this egg white and then it's all encased in this shell and it looks like one like really cohesive, perfect thing. Yeah, yeah. Because we know that it's not uh, a solitary thing. We know what where it came from. We know mm. its origin, right? The chicken or the egg. Uh, the eggs come from chickens, yes. Well, it's, it's just the, the common what came first sure. argument. But, but in this case, we... We know. Um, so, you know, we can like follow that line of, well, that came from a chicken who was on a farm that's out in the, you know, in this land, part of our uh, our world, which is in this, we can trace it all the way back. Right, right. But when you look at the universe as a, as a whole singular being, we don't have any other frame of reference. Sure. So we, so don't, we are the egg kind of. Right. Yeah. And we don't know if... Because we have nothing else to compare it to, like, is that orderly? Is that some point of like perfect symmetry and order, or is that an egg in a much larger universe yeah. or a, a multiverse? Right. And maybe there are other universes in which things run from total chaos back to order, or some combination of the two, or yeah. fluctuate between multiple states. And so when you I guess to answer that, like there could be, if you believe in the the idea of a multiverse, time may not exist or exist totally differently in other universes. And it sure. might just be coincidental that it works the way it does in ours because that's the only one we can look at. It makes me think about God and people's search for God, you know, like if, How so? in the way that we are, we are, it, it, when you look at our universe as an egg, People are like consistently looking for the chicken. You know, how did we hatch? You how, call God a chicken? Yeah, I did. What's up, God? Come, come smite at me, bro. Us. <laughs> smite, smite us, bro. I called you a chicken. What's up? Summon some demons. Say, on say my name. Say my name one time. Um, <laughs> yeah, wait for the EVP, bro. Oh wait, are we good? No EVPs. We're straight. All right, I think we're good. No God ghosts. No God ghosts. No smoting will be done today. <laughs> Um, but you know what I mean? Like people, people looking for, um, that context, I guess. Oh man. I hope you find it. <laughs> yes. Hell yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, I, and then obviously that's just all, anytime you get to that level of like what's outside of our universe, it's right. pure speculation. Oh and yeah, of course. That area is for philosophers and not scientists at that point. <laughs> And definitely not for us. We are neither. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. We are we are bad versions of both. Um, all right, should we... Yeah, we don't a, need a... Have a no, not yet? Uh, who needs breaks today? Well, let's take a quick break. Fuck with us. We broke now. <laughs> no breaks. We broke. <laughs> nah, we not broke. We'll be back. Um... Yeah, we'll, we'll take a we'll take a quick break here, and then uh, when we come back, um, oh man, we got a whole bunch of crazy shit to talk about. I got some paradoxes. Yeah, we are going to talk about the concept of paradoxes, which is so thorough in time travel. Yep. Um, I've got. Uh, I want to talk about why MCA. If, uh, no, I don't want to talk about oh. that at all. I want to talk about why, if time travel is even potentially real, how come we ain't found no time travelers? Or have we? Jump, jump, jump! Cue the X Files theme. All right, we'll be back. It's the one podcast. We want to hear from you. Send us a message. Email hi, that's H-I, at whatifpodcast.com. Or leave us a voicemail at 612-246-4614. Paradoxicals. Paradoxicals. Dude, can we start a popsicle company called Paradoxicals and instead of jokes on them, they have like paradoxes that are going to fuck up kids' brains? (laughs) Existential crisis (laughs) in in every box. (laughs) I want a grape one. (laughs) I want to (laughs) die. All right. Paradox number one. I got four four potential paradoxes of time travel for you. You guys go support our Patreon so whenever we have ideas like that, we can just go make that commercial. 
commercial. Can we can we tell people about the thing that we're doing with the stuff? Yeah, do you want to? Yeah. All right. So, um so some of y'all uh a good chunk of y'all actually have been supporting the Patreon, which is awesome. Uh patreoncom podcast. Thank y'all for doing that so far. Some of y'all got some cool mugs. We've done some video and some behind the scenes stuff. Um moving forward, uh we're going to have a lot of content on the Patreon. Yeah. Starting probably within the next week, maybe two, we're waiting on a thing and a thing. Yep. Uh, we're going to start putting up a f- another full episode every week exclusive to the Patreon. Yeah. So um, to those of you who have supported so far and got your mug, uh, thank you all for supporting through us figuring out how we were going to accomplish a full new episode every week. Um, but now that we have figured that out, yeah, I think starting next week or maybe the week after, um, you'll get the episode that we're doing here and then there'll be a whole nother basically hour of what if content, uh, that'll be inside of our Patreon. Uh, Cinco Dolores. What do we say? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's five is the base level to get the new, uh, to get the new weekly episode as well. Five dollars a month. Yeah. You're going to you have double the bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you will. You'll get, you'll get literally four. That's a dollar 25 an episode. episodes. Yeah. I promise to give you a dollar 25 worth of bullshit on a weekly basis. No doubt. Um, so yeah. So if you want to go to, uh, patreon.com slash what if podcast and get prepped, you can. Um, otherwise, as we move forward, we will be probably alerting y'all to what Actually, we are talking about. This ain't coming out for like a week and a half. Oh, right. So it'll go probably there right be, now. Yeah, go there right now. Time traveling. Time traveling. Oh shit. We did it. We, you guys, we made it. Player, we made it. <laughs> yeah. Um, if uh, yeah, if you go there right now, there's boom. Gonna, there's look gonna, at that. There's gonna be a full. Yeah, there will be. There'll be a full new episode up there Fill that you haven't heard before. One. Um. So yeah. So we, you know, we we uh, Spencer and I had an opportunity to make more of this and we decided that that would be a fun way to do it we carpet um, that dm my guy we did carpet that dm so go carpet that dm too and and check out the patreon and uh yeah like we said for five bucks a month you'll be getting four full new episodes on top of the four that we already give you every month um boy Wait, that's eight wow. hours of us every month um we hope we hope Y'all like us. Y'all stick around. I mean, you don't so you have must, to listen to it. We'll like leave this. that up to you guys. <laughs> yeah, so we're yeah. going to do it, though. Nah, yeah, we're, we are going to do it. And it's uh, it's going to be pretty cool and pretty paradox fun. Paradox so. number one. Paradoxicals. Predestination paradox. An existential crisis in a box. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got 12 popsicles. At least one of them is going to fuck you up for the rest of your life. <laughs> for sure it the will. The other 11 will just be for delicious. For sure it will. Yeah. Just a stone-faced, silent child. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> All right, the predestination paradox uh, okay. is the idea that the action of someone traveling back in time uh, becomes part of those events in the past and may ultimately cause the event that you're trying to prevent. Whoa. Let me give you an example because that's a lot of words. Is this different than the grandpa paradox? Slightly. Okay. Yes. Please continue. So, I apologize. Uh, example. Say a friend dies in a car accident. Let's not say that. Well, just totally. All, these, all these, right, all right. It's hypothetical, dude. All right, all right. <laughs> if, if you can't handle that one, that's you might, just a, it's just you might a, want to sit the next few minutes out. That's just a bad one. All right, all right, all right. Let's go. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll we'll make it nicer for for Ryan because he's a baby. Can we be like? Can, can it be like? Let's say. Uh, let's say your friend trips over a curb and scuffs their knee. Say you run over a squirrel while you're driving your car. All right, that works too. Just fuck squirrels. Those All things right. are evil. Tight. And for whatever reason, you decide that you're going to travel back in time and you're going to save this squirrel from from its fate. <laughs> or you're going to try your goddamnedest. Right. And uh, on your way, so you saw this squirrel get run over. You're like, I need to go back in time and I need to save that squirrel before that car runs over it. So you go back in time. You're going to the location. You're going to the right time. Yep. And on the way there, like two blocks before you get there, you run over the same squirrel. Ooh. Your oh, attempt, your I attempt see. to change the past, has therefore resulted in you just getting to that same destination in a different way. I was literally about to say final destination. Basically, yeah. It's it's the idea that like you that event has already happened, 
and you can't change it because then you're in this paradox of the only reason you went back was because of that event. Yeah. If that event hadn't happened, you wouldn't have gone back in time to undo that event. You probably wouldn't have, you know what I mean? <clears throat> I do. My only, my only thing would be that like, it's, it seems, it seems to me that, so with the example of the squirrel, the squirrel would have to do something differently than had happened. Well, the I was first trying time. to give a more serious example that would cause someone to time travel, and you couldn't handle the the idea of your hypothetical partner dying. But what I'm saying, I think I even said friend. I think I even made it. You did say friend. Okay, I even made it kinder for you than I originally had it in my notes. Oh, was that your significant other? Yeah. Jesus. Bro. Well, it's supposed to be something that would motivate you to time travel. No one cares about a squirrel. Hey, I care about. No, one. fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> they're rats All that right. can climb better that's true and they're fuzzy and they're fuzzy um okay alright I can get behind so it. if you undo your reason for time traveling then you don't have a reason to time travel and you didn't tra- time travel so therefore you can't be there etc cetera, etc cetera. right I guess what I'm trying to say though is if if the idea is that when you go back to save the squirrel you kill the squirrel anyway something different would have to happen yeah. in the squirrel's path for that to happen right so what would that thing be? What would be motivating that change and what had already happened with the squirrel? It's, it's you. You weren't there in that previous time. Or you're, you've no, now you changed were. your... You're going back but to... But you've a, changed your path because you didn't arrive there in the same way. You arrived there by time traveling. Well... So your it, time machine is going to land on the squirrel. You know, something like that. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. I'm with it. You ever watch The Simpsons? Yes. You ever watched the, I was watching uh, the Simpsons literally tonight. Before you watched I came the Treehouse of Horror where Homer turn, accidentally turns his toaster into a time machine. No, but I want to so bad right now. <laughs> it's I just rewatched it the other day. It's uh, I think it's the Treehouse of Horror from either season five or six. I tweet, think it's six. Tweet at us. At yeah, what if I'll, pod. I'll, I'll find it and tweet it before this goes up. But he goes. He is <laughs> the episode starts with him getting his hand stuck in his toaster. Phenomenal. <laughs> And then he smashes it trying to get it off his hand. Awesome. And in fixing it, he makes it a time machine. But every every time so good. every time he goes back in time, he fucks something up. Like he steps on a <laughs> bug or like whatever. And just caves in the universe every time. And then because he's gone so far back in time, he's gone like millions of years into the past. Trying to continue fixing what he fucked up. Right. It Got has it. like more and more drastic effects on on what uh on his current time. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next one is the grandfather paradox, which you've, you've mentioned a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the idea that can you handle the idea of, of a grandfather dying? Is that too much for you? Yeah. The, the, the video it's kind of necessary for this one. <laughs> you okay with Based that? Based on the name. Yes. Okay. The video that I was watching, uh, that explains the grandfather paradox on YouTube. It was like, <laughs> it was like, um, say you have a papa. And you've never really liked your papa. <laughs> I was like, okay, sure enough. Good. I hope he dies. <laughs> um, so uh, if you travel, this one's a little simpler. If you travel to the past to kill your grandfather, now you've never been born, meaning that you couldn't have traveled to the past because you don't exist. Right. Um, a couple hypotheses about how ways around that or workarounds for that. Um, one is like sort of a, a timeline protection so that if you were to travel back in time and attempt to do something that would result in your own extinction, undoing, um, that you physically wouldn't be able to. Like the universe would prevent you from accomplishing a, that task. So every time you point the gun at your, your grandfather, it jams or it does, you know, whatever you miss or yeah. something. Um, the other one is that if you, if you do that, if you kill your grandfather, you then create like a, a timeline split. Sure. So any any world in which you go backwards and do something differently than what would have happened going forwards, that creates a new branch in the proverbial time tree. Right. So if I go back in time and I kill my grandfather and then I come back to the present, I'm now entering a present where I never existed no one knows who I am, and I just showed up as some weird time traveler guy. hey Right? Sounds pretty neat. It's a good way to disappear. You know, wait, do you have more paradoxes? I got a couple more. Okay, keep going. I never fully understood that one, because like it, it doesn't require you to kill your grandfather. What just you like, you go back to the moment that he meets your grandma, and you push him the other way, so he never sees her. Boom. Yeah, 
Yeah, the de- the death unnecessarily violent. The death one in that one is yeah. definitely unnecessary. Yeah, yeah. Well, or just like convince him when he's nine that he should move to Indiana as soon as he can. <laughs> Be more fun. Yeah, but maybe the idea is that like going back to your point about the predestination shit that like maybe somehow people would like like somehow they would the universe would pull them back together whereas killing your grandfather would literally biologically prevent you from being sure. made kind of thing sure but i yeah i see your point slight, um, slight variation on that one is yep. the is called the let's kill hitler paradox yeah Which is so, pretty solid can you handle seriously let's <laughs> can we do that <laughs> So, pretty self-explanatory. You go back in time and you you off somebody who's done horrible things to the world. Yes. Um, the problem being that you you've erased the reason that you went back in time in the first place. Yeah. And so you wouldn't if that was your motivation for time traveling. Now you play that up to the future. You don't have a reason to time travel. Therefore, you have this paradox. Right. Because how did you? Right. How did you go and do that? And if it's somebody that had that big of an impact, positively or negatively on the world, obviously extremely negatively with with Hitler's yeah. case, you create a huge butterfly effect of everyone that reacted to Hitler and the Nazis right. and, and World War II things. and everything in this very, as a huge reach. Right. To the, the point of like us even learning about Hitler and the Nazis in school when we were kids. Right. None of that happens. And right. who knows what effect that has then on a large the, scale right. when it's something that affected hundreds of millions of people. Can we, can we make let's kill Hitler t-shirts? <laughs> you, know, you know, he's dead, right? <laughs> yeah. But I still like the idea. Just, yeah. The, the, uh, the, the symbolism. Yeah. yeah. The ethos is okay. there. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, lastly, the bootstrap paradox. Mm. in which an object or a person or some piece of information sent back in time creates this loop where now that object has no origin. Something just appeared out of the blue. Okay. Um, So, for instance, if George Lucas now were to travel back in time and, and give himself a better script for the three prequels, there's there, there's no point of origin for that information because it came from himself, but in the future. But also in the past. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you're messing up your own timeline where you're creating this loop where now you're going to play it forward to the point where you go back and change something again. And then do it over and over again. Right. And so you're stuck in this sort of mm. repeating loop of... Except that the idea would be that you would make different movies, which would have a different impact. But that but again if you goes did, back to the parent. then you never get to the point where you went back before all of that, right? Because that because this goes back to the whole so not giving yourself a reason to time travel in the first place. If you place. do make different choices and you don't make those shitty prequels, <laughs> then you never go back in time and give yourself good strip scripts for the prequels, and mm-hmm. they don't exist. Uh, so you have this loop of like you can't just drop in an item or this piece of information. And if you do, then it creates a loop from that moment up until the moment where you went back. A paradox, a paradox, a most unusual paradox. Do you know what that's from? No, but I still wish Mason was singing it. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) I was Frederick in Pirates of Penzance in middle school, and that uh, that is a song from the musical Pirates of Penzance. Pirates of Pam's Pants? What are you saying? Pirates of Penzance. What is that? P-E-N-Z-A-N-C-E. It's a super famous musical, bro. Pirates of Penzance. I don't fuck with musicals like that. Well, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Look, Google me, baby. Google that shit. I'll, so, sometime I'll put like a really, really embarrassing picture of me in a pirate costume with pink cheek makeup on our Twitter Please. from Pirates of Penzance. Please, but it, it, this song is all about paradoxes. That's interesting. It's, there's a lot of them. I mean, there's a lot of them. That's one of the things with time travel that I feel like is sort of uh, makes it less probable. Is it seems like there's so many ways that it could go really poorly and would fuck up a whole bunch of stuff. Or, or you have uh, to really outthink the the outcomes. There's no way you could. I don't feel like you could either. 
And you would have, there's no way to predict what those outcomes would be based on your actions. For sure. Again, it would be, citing the, the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. Yes. One of them is that he, like a bug flies on, lands on his face and he brushes it off. Right. And then that creates all, you know, it's, it's literally the butterfly effect of like right. the tiniest change. If you extrapolate it far enough out, totally. can have huge impacts. Totally. Tell me about the aliens, bro. Um, Speaking of observing the past. Well, um, so I kind of want to tell you about the time traveler convention first. Whoa. Before we get into aliens. We're okay. Gonna, if if we're gonna if we're gonna stick with our usual uh, our usual arc of saving the wildest bullshit for the very last, I feel like we should save aliens. For I the also very end. this is just a, mostly a reminder to myself that yes. I'm saying out loud because then I'll hear it when I'm <laughs> editing the episode. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna find some of the Art Bell when he hosted Coast to Coast would have uh, he would just some nights say, "If you're a time traveler, call me." And just have open open phone lines, unscreened calls of just like, you're a time traveler, I would like to talk to you live on literally coast-to-coast syndicated radio for as long as you feel like it. And people called, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And those recordings are out there and I will find them and tweet them so that we can all share in the glory that was uh, prime Art Bell coast-to-coast. And Art Bell time traveler interviews. Yes. Um, that is... Maybe the most perfect segue you could have possibly given me, having having not known. <laughs> We're good at this shit. <laughs> um, having not known what the fuck I was about to talk about. Um, well, it, it, it was something I stumbled across while I was while I was re- researching for this episode. When you were like, "I'm going to come back to if if I go along this tree, I'm going to come back to the world in a different place." I was like, "Well, where you should come back is to the time traveler convention, which is a real event." That happened oh. in 2005. I know It's not we, ongoing? We can't go. I mean, I guess you don't need to repeat it, right? Well, <laughs> legi- <laughs> legitimately, that is 100% their... You uh, only got to do it once. Yep. As so, long as you got some good PR. Bro, you're nailing it, man. Sorry, I'm going to shut up. Go no, ahead. it's fine. Go you're ahead. you're ahead. nailing it. That's literally what they did. So the... the uh, what? Okay, this was a convention that was put on by MIT... So, if you needed any evidence that smart people think that time travel is maybe out there, MIT... Or they like dumb jokes like or, the rest of us. Or that. Uh, but MIT definitely allowed a time traveler convention to happen. It was on May 7th of 2005. And they asked for a lot of PR around it. Most specifically, highlighting the time, which was 2245 EDT. And Can you just pick a round number? I, I don't know. It's it's two p.m. UTC, so I don't know what the differences are in those. Wait, what? Um, all right, sorry, that's not important at all. Keep going. <laughs> they picked a very specific time and publicized the time, and they uh, picked the latitude and longitude of their East Campus courtyard in front of the Walker Memorial at MIT, forty-two point three six zero 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 seven degrees north and seventy-one point zero eight seven eight seven zero degrees west, and they publicized the date, the time. And the latitude and longitude in every conceivable publication they could get because their theory was if we get enough press out of it, time travelers will stumble across this information throughout the timescape of the world and know that this is this would be a really good time and place to show up. And I think people they're would overestimating be, their reach. I didn't hear about it. Well, they got the New York Times wrote about it. So, I mean, that's like, you that's know, some, good. that's yeah, something that's solid. Um, New York Times, Wired, Slashdot, they got a bunch of publicity about uh, what they were, you know, trying to accomplish. Uh, spoiler alert, they didn't get any time travelers who Heck. showed up at their convention. Heck. <laughs> um, didn't, didn't Stephen Hawking do something similar, or was he was he involved in this event? Um, He may have been. I don't see... Uh, I, I didn't see his name attached to this. Okay, I came across some story of Stephen Hawking throwing a party for time travelers and thinking he was just adorable. Oh, that's funny. I like it. I mean, it is kind of a funny concept, though. You're essentially creating a landing pad for people who, if they were going to come back to a time and place, it would be a uh, safe and welcome time and place to come back to? I don't know. As opposed to other times where people are going to be like, it's a time traveler! (laughs) Kill him! I mean, maybe. Maybe. Uh, they're from another dimension. <laughs> bow now down. I don't trust him. Bow down. 
I uh, I'm really excited for when we do invent time travel in our lifetimes, and you and I go, bro. You know where we should go. But but hold on, hold on, because this brings up another paradox. What if a time machine isn't invented until after 2005? You can't go back to before 2005 because because then there's no time machine, and you can't be there or you're stuck there. One or the other. You can be there. How? Because you brought the time machine with you. To a, a time where time machines don't exist? Isn't that the entire concept of time travel, though? That you could bring physically something to another... I mean, if your body... But how could you go... How if your you body go can f- go, so can your time machine. But how could you go to a time where time machine and time travel... Time machines and time travel don't exist? I mean, that... W- Wouldn't you be limited by whenever it was invented? Wouldn't you be limited by the fact that you weren't alive in the 1800s if you time travel back to the 1800s? Isn't yeah. that the whole concept, though? It's not that those things need to be there. It's that you can bring them there because you have the ability to travel to them. Well, I think that could also be a paradox of I cannot be alive in the 1800s and in 2017. I mean... So now have I fully left 2017 and I I am erased from all those people's memories as soon as I leave? I think as far as I have always understood time travel to work, and this is obviously from a very pop cultural understanding, because not it doesn't actually from work. a scientific understanding, is that sorry guys, <laughs> is that you just show up in that period of time. Well, you yeah, because that's a way easier thing to write into a movie. And it's way cooler, dude. Right, yeah. Way cooler. I'm saying I'm not convinced that if it were real, that is how it would work. You, I think there's a good chance you'd be limited to traveling to times in which time travel is is in existence. I mean, I did see something about uh, people who talk about traveling through wormholes and black holes. The idea being that if you could travel from one to the other, that essentially you would need the other end to be in existence. And for the other end to be in existence, it could only be in existence when the wormhole was created in the first place. So wormholes happen in the fucking universe and you could only travel through the straw once the straw was invented right so you couldn't you couldn't travel back to a time before the straw was put in place are you wait you're calling a wormhole a straw yeah like a tunnel okay, like it. from one end to the other yeah right so yeah that would theoretically as that has been explained that would affirm your uh your point yeah so Maybe it's not that there are no time travelers. Maybe they just can't go to 2005 because we don't invent time travel until 2294. Mm. So then we or five million and six. So then we won't see any time travelers. Well, you and I won't probably. Or have we already? Cool segue, dude. Segue. We need a we need a finish him sound effect, but it's segue. I don't think that's something we need. Well, let's talk about it. We're fine. We'll discuss it off the air. So there's an interesting. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes it's not your night, man. There's an interesting. Um, there's an interesting Stephen Hawking. Uh, well, so so basically, this is actually what you are saying is a real thing. It's called the Fermi paradox. It's another one that you did not outline, and and Hawking states this too. The the reason that we have not been overpopulated by he refers to it as tourists from the future, which I find very funny. Uh, Wait, you said the Fermi paradox? Yeah. Isn't that about finding extraterrestrial life and why we haven't? Um, How does that relate to time travel? It is about time travel and the absence of tourists in the future. It says it does not prove that time travel is impossible, but it might it might suggest that time travel is physically possible, but is never fully developed or is cautiously used. And also, uh, and also possibly that it is not possible to travel back to earlier regions in space time before re- other regions of space time travel were created. Does That's that make sense? outlined in the. F- okay. It's a variation of it, is the way that it's explained. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, sorry, that just confused me. Because the, the way that the Fermi paradox is usually laid out is in relation to there should be life all over the place. Right. Why have we never seen any? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're saying they're applying that same concept to there should be time travelers everywhere. Why don't we see any? Yes. Got it. And that and that for there to be more time travelers, more time travel would have had to have been invented so you can only time travel between times when time travel had been invented. Now I'm with you. In the way that the Fermi paradox would be, the reason there's not life on other planets is because we're the only life on in the universe right now, but we will 
maybe eventually populate other planets and that's where life throughout the universe will come from potentially or whatever. Sure. Um, so I think it's really interesting. Uh, Carl Sagan once suggested that time travel might still be a possibility, but what if uh, time travelers were disguising their existence or are not recognized as time travelers? Trying to avoid those paradoxes. Right. Parad- paradox Yes. Parad- paradox Paradoxicals! Um, and so I always thought it was fascinating to consider the concept that maybe all the lights we see in the sky and the spaceships and the observations and abductions are really just people from the future coming back to visit Earth and check it out. Whoa, baby boy. Yeah. Whoa, baby boy. Yeah. Whoa, baby boy. <laughs> Three. Yeah, it's a pretty out there thing you just said. Yeah, it's a really out there thing. But but I always thought it was a fascinating concept to consider the fact that, you know, we always go, oh, they're aliens are from another planet. Why don't they want to talk to us? Why don't they want to fucking, you know, take me to your leader, this whole shit. And maybe all the UFO sightings that happen in the world are really people coming back from the past, like check out the planet and they can fucking zip in and out and check things out. And this is what, you know, it's like, it's like the, it's the futuristic version of when you go, used to go on those field trips in like middle school, on the magic school bus, on the magic school bus to the 1800s cities and towns. You know, do you ever do that? Where you like, you go to a a historical society based place i have no idea what you're talking about i think you had a time slip dude no you got on a school bus and you were in the 1800s (laughs) this was a there's a place that exists it's in southern minnesota and it sounds a lot like a time slip (laughs) and we we went there on a field trip for school and when you go there you go in and everyone who's quote unquote living there is in character and they're teaching you how they blacksmith and Oh, hello, children. Welcome to the burber de burr And I'm just, this is what I do for work. And it's very like... Uh, I don't know, man. It sounds like you might be a time traveler. It sounds a time traveler. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what, what's the deal with when we see aliens and UFOs and stuff, though? What do you mean? Well, they're doing a shit job of hiding themselves. But I think the idea is they're they're not hiding themselves, but they're hiding themselves enough that it just is a weird thing, but it's not evidentiary of anything because we don't have any evidence of UFOs being anything other than being weird. Well, well, depends on who you ask or military airplanes or Mike weather balloons disagree. or Mike would disagree. I'm just and saying. Then, so they have what? They have some sort of policy that every once in a while you can abduct somebody, but only if they're sleeping and only yes. if you put them back. Exactly. <laughs> It's like um, it's like going to the zoo. It's like you can look at the animals, but you can't touch them, you know? And every uh, once in a while... You can't take them places and put things in their butt either, though. Well... Or at least you got to pay extra. You remember the penguin story? Nope. Mm. I had a coworker that worked in Milwaukee who... A former coworker. This was many lifetimes ago. Uh, and he was like... He was a... Um, like a camp counselor for a summer camp. And they would go on field trips. And one time they went to the zoo in Milwaukee and there was like a petting area for a set of new baby penguins. And he, they got on the bus to go back to take the kids back to the community center. And there was this massive commotion in the back of the bus. And he was like, what the fuck is going on? And he went into the back of the bus and one of the kids was guarding his backpack. And he was like, he was like, dude, what are you doing? And they're like, no. Ah! And then he's like, dude, what are you doing? He like unzips the backpack and he, the kid had got one of the baby penguins uh-oh. and put it in his fucking backpack, dude. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> they Holy had to shit, turn the how? Fu- I, I, he says to this day, no one has any idea. They think there was so much dude, commotion going on. That kid deserves a Nobel Prize. I, I mean, a national treasure and should be treated as such. But, wow. So sometimes you can take... Animals well, the the, uh, the Como Zoo, which is like the the B grade Minnesota Zoo, it is the true Minnesota Zoo is the bomb. It's called the Minnesota Zoo. Yeah, yeah. this is just like a little prison for animals. Oh, that's all zoos. Uh, <laughs> that's this is true. a small, shitty like county. This one feels a <laughs> county more... jail for animals. <laughs> oh, shit, <laughs> uh... but they, you can rent the animals. No, the fuck you. Yeah, can't. if you have an event coming up that you need an orangutan for, you can pay him like a couple oh, hundred bucks. Shit, 
I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll Google it. Okay, we're obviously having a chimpanzee on the show. It will rip your face off, and it would be a horrible interview because they can't talk. So, sorry, an orangutan. That's even worse. They're bigger. Really? What? Really? Or- they're orangutans bigger? are bigger than chimps? How about a yeah. spider monkey? That's probably fine. My, uh, I had a friend mm-hmm. in like elementary and middle school who- They own one? His parents were f- uh, first generation immigrants from Iran. Whoa. And uh, they had some interesting, like, you know, they moved here when they were like Pets? 30. And his aunt had a bunch of animals that you cannot acquire legally in the United States in her house. How did they get them? I don't, I mean, oh, somebody yeah. in Iran shipped her a spider monkey. Yeah. I don't know. But Whoa. like, she had at least one, sometimes a couple monkeys in her house. Whoa. And they were pretty chill. I mean, they're loud sometimes, but... Uh, I imagine they're little screechers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at least they can't, like, kill you whenever they want, like an orangutan could. That's or a real. chimp. I'm just saying, man, maybe we are the animals in the zoo, and the people paying to go to the zoo are flying here in UFOs they're from... Fu- future from, us? From the future us. I'm just saying. Maybe that. What if? Yeah. What if that Spencer? I, hey, I, I can't prove that that isn't happening. It's real. Yeah. I also cannot prove it is. I, I have heard that. Uh, I think it was. Uh, I'm sure this this idea has been put forth many times, but I first came across that idea that aliens and UFOs are future versions of ourselves mm-hmm. in uh, Micah Hanks's book, The UFO Singularity. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Tossing those big words into that book right, title. Right. It worked. I read it. Yeah, right. Uh that yeah, his, his idea was that like eventually we're gonna evolve past being human mm. and we're gonna exist on some other plane of existence and we'll also figure out like either interdimensional and or time travel. Right, right. And come fuck with ourselves in the past. <laughs> <laughs> you idiots, we're gonna drive you crazy. Maybe that's whoa. Yeah, you still would have all the same paradoxes, though. Yeah, for sure. Because then, even if even if you're introducing like UFOs and stuff into the culture, then that still is we're not thinking of it as time travel, but it's still now a thing that's in our consciousness that wasn't before you came back. True, and then that would change your timeline too. True, right? to some extent. Yeah, I mean. Depending on what your level of awareness is and how much that affects things, maybe there's a tolerance for awareness, you know, which is like weird, just have bright, a really high weird shit tolerance in the future. Yeah, and like bright lights in the sky are a like, well, that's not that weird. We'll be fine. I'm, I, yeah, I'm with it. I think like it, it gets in the weird territory when you start trying to define the difference between time and dimensional travel too. Folding the paper, especially if you think of. Time as possibly another dimension. Right. Um, can we end with one dimensional travel story? Sure. By all means. We haven't told just a straight up, like, probably completely false but entertaining <laughs> story yet this episode. If you guys, I feel like we need at least one. If you guys want those, that's pretty much what most of the information on the internet is about. Yeah. There's a TMZ segment about Jay-Z being a time traveler because somebody found a picture wow. of a dude from the 30s Good in Harlem. Them. <laughs> who looks, I will admit, a, it lot, Joe a lot like Jay-Z. <laughs> they just saw a Joe Camel ad. <laughs> That's fucked up. Um, but it, seriously, it looks a lot like him, and they did a full fucking bit. They did a full okay. bit on TMZ about whether or not Jay-Z's a time traveler because this picture looked enough like him. That's pretty much, just to save y'all some Googling, what most information about people who time travel is about on the internet. All right. Maybe bullshit, but super entertaining story to close out the show. <laughs> also, this Bring is like all. most of what the Patreon episodes are going to be. So if if bullshit but entertaining stories are your thing, talk to your guys on the internet. It's pretty much, pretty much all we've given you so far. So it must be what you guys are down for. This comes from Doctor Raúl Centeno, Doctor Dre. Who? Nope, not that one. Damn. Uh, who was a doctor in <laughs> Lima, Peru? Mm-hmm. And he recounts a case in which a patient came to see him who had uh, like a very advanced case of uh, hemiplegic. Don't know what that is. So paraplegic, meaning you're paralyzed. Hemiplegic is being paralyzed on one side of your body, hemisphere. Whoa, that's crazy. Which is apparently a thing that happens. Isn't that often stroke-induced? I think so, yeah. 
And so they, he ran several tests, including a CAT scan and some, some other stuff. And there were no areas of uh, this woman's brain that showed any sort of bleeding or lesions or any uh, blood vessels that were damaged, which is usually what would cause it, which could be a result of a stroke. Right. And so he started asking her, you know, when did this happen? How did this happen? Has anything weird been going on in general with your health? Outside of the fact that half your body doesn't really work right now. Well, right, but just trying to get, you know, any any clues as to why this might have happened because it didn't seem like it was any of the usual causes. Right. She said to him, and I'm just going to read because they have a direct quote from her describing her situation. Terrific. I was at a campground in the vicinity of the ancient stone forest, Markawasi, when, mm. I, found, when I went out exploring late at night with some friends. Oddly enough, we heard strains of music and noticed a small torch-lit stone cabin. Okay. We were able to see people dancing inside, but upon getting closer, I felt a sudden sensation of cold, which I paid attention to, and I stuck my head through an open door. It was then that I saw the occupants were clad in 17th century fashion. I tried to enter the room, but one of my girlfriends pulled me out. Time slip. So what she says, though, is that as soon as this happened, she was then paralyzed on that half of her body that had gone through that doorway. Whoa! Mm Mm-hmm. So she thinks that they came across some sort of weird time dimensional space vortex and that because she entered it and then was pulled back out that it had this physical effect on her. We talked about this off air before we started, but Spencer and I were talking about theoretically traveling through wormholes and black holes, which is also a lot of what the internet is about. <laughs> and I'm fairly certain we said, yeah, except that the thing about that is that you would die. <laughs> it would, Or we don't know, or we don't but know. either way, no one would be able to see it and you wouldn't be able to tell anyone about it. Yeah. Um, the doctor then adds to her account that many people in the area have also had strange experiences around there. Um, he also says, no conclusive proof of this exists, of course. <laughs> Although Sick burn. I and some others have visited the Stone Forest can attest to the existence of a strange kind of energy. Ooh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, he then asks what would have happened had her body completely entered if she had just opened the door and walked in. Would she have been stuck there? Would she have been totally paralyzed? Would she have instantly died? Would she have just blinked out of existence? Would she have just looked down and she's wearing a like a ball gown from the 1700s and she just starts dancing? You know, so that's that's that story. You you know how sometimes when people do like really dumb things to themselves that result in (laughs) trips to the ER, they make up some bullshit about how they make up some stories. Did she like, and usually, you know, it's like how I slipped and fell and I wasn't wearing pants and this thing went up my butt. Usually it's, it's like, yeah, but yeah. Is, is this the, is this one extreme end of that? Oops. I fell on this round object. Continuum. I, I, I mean, I guess I feel like I have, if it's me, I would rather be honest about what happened to me medically so that I can well, be is, treated as such. Is there, well, he already doesn't know how to treat it. That what year the first is thing from? He said, uh, I don't know, dude. It's not, if, <laughs> I don't know. It's a fucking lie. Uh, 99. All right. <laughs> from, it's from the journal of Hispanic ufology. <laughs> I didn't see that until now. Sorry, wow. guys. That's a real thing, huh? <laughs> we should get a subscription I for guess, the podcast. I guess so. Write it off on our taxes. <laughs> uh, They'd be amazed at what we write off on our taxes. But yeah, dimensional time. There, there's the whole. Uh, we don't. We don't have time. Huh? Yeah. But the the whole idea of uh, like a time storm. Whoa. Which is something that is sometimes. Um, Brought up in relation to Bermuda Triangle right, type right. things where we flew into this weird fog and then we saw a plane that was a really old plane. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> we came back and my beard was three feet long. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh, time, yeah, time travel. travel guys. Uh, you can go forward. You probably can't go back unless you're really, really tiny. 
or in, or if you're willing to risk half your body getting paralyzed and getting spaghettified and <laughs> getting spaghettified. Um. All right. Well, shit. I think that's gonna do it. Oops, all spaghetti. Oops, all, <laughs> oops, I'm spaghetti. <laughs> so oops, all berries. <laughs> Oops, all spaghetti. Oop, a bowl full of pulverized human being <laughs> traveling through a wormhole. Uh, all right, we love you guys. Uh, go join the Facebook group. Uh, and then, yeah, as always, you guys can send us an email at hi at com if you want to bullshit with us. We respond to literally every email we get. Yes. Uh, even when they're only like two words or whatever. So, Or even that one guy who emailed just to tell me I was an asshole that one time. <laughs> that I even responded to him. That did so. happen. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so, so hit us back or hit us up there if you want. Otherwise hit up us, hit us up on the socials at what if pod on everything or join the Facebook group. And as always, there's videos and pictures and show notes and links, uh, and a whole bunch of other shit on our website. Check us out at what if podcast.com. Everyone was pretty ugly, but it was still a pretty good time. We'll see you next week. We'll be back next week with another episode of the What If Podcast. Learn more at www.whatifpodcast.com.